This will be a demonstration on the different environments we're going to be working on in CAT here at Everett Community College. So basically we have the final installation is what we're trying to achieve. This would be the final install when we have our car fully built. An assembly to that might be the door that you're going to put on at the final install. So the door itself would be an assembly going in at final install. And the door itself would be made up of several components. Those components could be individual detail parts being put on at this time, or they could be sub-assemblies. For example, there might be a door handle assembly, or the gears for the windows might come in and get installed on the door as a sub-assembly. Much like the engine would be an assembly onto the car, the manufacturer that makes the engine this would be their final install and then they would ship the engine to the car company and the car company would install the engine assembly at their final install level. For the engine manufacturer, they have many components such as maybe this exhaust manifold here would be an individual part. The nuts, the bolts, everything that holds these things down for like this valve cover gasket those are all individual parts. You might have an alternator. The alternator would be actually a sub-assembly because the alternator is made up of many different things that go onto the engine. So when they install the alternator onto the engine, that alternator is a sub-assembly. It's not an individual detailed part. Oops. So a pulley itself is a detailed part, but if the pulley has bushings or uh, bearings and press fit inside of it, then that also becomes an assembly. You might think of it as a detail part, but once there's two pieces to make up one unit, that unit becomes an assembly. So another example would be a cast iron. The wheel is the assembly, uh, sorry, the cast iron wheel assembly might go on a toolbox or something like that, some cart or something. Wherever it's getting attached, at that point, it would be the final installation. It would be a sub-assembly or an assembly going on to the tool cart. Whereas if the manufacturer is the one that makes the uh, caster wheel, when they're done, that is their final installation. So the caster wheel itself is made up of a few components. You have weld mitts assemblies, sub-assemblies, details, whatever, to get to this part. For example, the nut and bolt itself would be individual components. And then this wheel would probably have a rim and a tire and maybe a bushing on the inside. Whatever that is, that becomes an assembly going into the final caster wheel assembly or final installation. So you have also three pieces here. You have these two side plates and you have this plate on the top that's getting welded right up in here. Once we create that weldment, it doesn't come off. So an assembly is something I can take apart. Like if I took this bolt off, I could disassemble this. But we're not really able to just take off this weldment. So this weldment makes this more of a permanent part. Once I take three pieces and weld them together, it is called a weldment. So this fillet weld right here is what creates this piece to become not an assembly, not a detail part, but a weldment because it was three detail parts to make up the one weldment. So detail parts are just simply a single individual part. They could have multiple features to get there, but in the end, it's one single piece. With that one single piece, you would dimension that part up. So you would create orthographic views throw on dimensions so that the shop would know how to make this part. So in the end, we're taking detail parts and we're creating drawings. The drawing becomes a legal binding contract. So if something were to go wrong and it were there were a design flaw, it would come back to the drawing and if something were designed incorrectly, the designers would be responsible. If the part were manufactured correctly, uh, if the part were designed correctly but not manufactured correctly, then it would go on the fault of the manufacturing shop. So that's why it's important that the engineering tech puts on the necessary dimensions to properly build this part. 
That's the number one reason we really make drawings is to help the shop identify what needs to be done to make this part. This drawing uh, is orthographic views and isometric views inside of a border. This is an example of a weldment drawing. It's a weldment drawing because I see places here where they're telling me to solder. They might have weldment flags on here. Once we solder something together, it becomes a welded piece, and this makes it a weldment. It is also a legal binding contract, something that the shop uses to make the parts. That's why welders need to learn how to read all the symbols, all the weld symbols that go on the drawings, as well as the designers need to understand what weld symbols that they're calling off. Many times the welding group has gotten together with the engineering group and they've discussed the intent and decided that there might be a better way to uh, create this part better ways to weld it and uh, that is best discussed with the shop as the shop has a lot of experience on what really is working and not working in the shop. This is an example of an assembly drawing also a legal binding contract. It is identified it is used to identify how to assemble something together. It will have a list of materials you see over the title block you have a list of materials it will have a part number and a description of the part. These item numbers identified by these balloons here so that the shop could find part number one is item number one here this is the part number and it's indexing base. So that is an assembly drawing. So in conclusion here we as engineering tech designers need to use multiple environments to get to our final installation level. We need to know how to uh, create a legal binding contract, which is a drawing. We need to understand how to dimension the drawings so that they can make the parts. We know how to create the detailed parts and the weldments in the CAD model and 3D modeling and define those and how to make assemblies and sub-assemblies of those so that we can put the sub-assemblies and assemblies into the final installation. Thank you. Hopefully that helps you understand what kinds of things we're going to be learning in the CAD design class.